the HH Delhi Chargers and Tom, these two teams are poised and ready for action here tonight as the Midland High Chemics come in with the best start in their school uh, history as they come in with a 12-0 record. On the other side, the Delhi Chargers, they're off to a pretty good start as well. Yeah. Dalhai's coming in with a 10-2 record on the game here tonight. All indications, Tom, that this should be a fun night of girls' basketball. Now, for some, they'd say this game really doesn't count because it's not the Valley game. But boy, does it count. Uh, the Midland High girls have been waiting for the time when this group was going to become juniors and seniors. They've watched this group come up from very, very young. Very talented group, and Dow's got a bunch of talent on their side also. Yeah, you see the Dow High Chargers on your screen right now doing their warm-ups under Coach Kyle Tyson. The Chargers, as we mentioned, come again 10-2. and two. They are 3-1 and one in the Saginaw Valley. The first time these two teams met, only a seven-point difference as the Midland High Kimmicks came away with the win. But if you look at the Dow High Chargers and now the Midland High Kimmicks, you know, Kimmicks at 12-0. and 0. This is a team you mentioned just loaded with talent. They've got six, seven maybe eight players that could legitimately be starters. Yes, and they and they, they play a very fast game. They put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, but that game that they played against Dow High early, that was an odd game. Dow started with a, with a sizable about eight point lead. Then all of a sudden Dow stopped scoring for the better part of a full quarter. And then uh, Midland got some confidence and then uh, created some baskets towards the end and made the, the 38 31 victory possible. So will it be interesting to see what happens tonight? We got Alexa Colonitis, an important player for Dow, did not play in the first game. So we'll see what kind of uh, uh, benefit that she's able to give uh, shortly after coming back from an injury. Yeah, and, and Coach Kyle Tyson referred to her as a team leader and you know on the floor and she just adds a different dynamic. She's also a defensive player, which is something that the Dow High Chargers are going to need tonight against uh, Midland High Kimmicks. Speaking of the Kimmicks, they are a very defense-oriented team. Kyle Tyson says we're gonna have to break that defense, break that press if we want a chance to win. And the girls that play in the back are very, very smart. You've got uh, Anna Tuck and Alyssa Kritz play kind of center field and back, and they're very, very uh, talented with good judgment. We are set to go. It's high school basketball on MPS-TV, the Kimmicks, and the Chargers right now. Let's turn things over to the public address announcer. I would ask that you please stand as we honor America with the National Anthem. a uh, ready to go a pep band. We don't need any starting lineup if the pep band says it's time for the uh, Charger fight song if we get ready for high school basketball here on MPS TV. Chargers and the Chemex and uh, yeah, Tom, we talked about it a little bit earlier, how good of a game this has the potential to be and we'll talk about that more. But now, let's get those starting lineups. <laughs> Number five, 
Starting lineups, and we are set to go. High School Basketball, MPSTV, Dow High, coached by Kyle Tyson, the home team tonight in their white uniforms with green lettering and gold numbers. Chloe McVeigh, Kennedy Caldwell, Jada Garner, Caitlin Murray, and Abby Ray to start for the Chargers. Midland High, under coach Jaden Klobis, will counter with Jordan Phillips, Olivia Carpenter, Alyssa Critch, Anna Tuck, and Sydney Schaefer as their starting five. The official for tonight's game, Keith Richardson, Brandon Crawford, and Tori Crawford. A brand new gym floor at the end of December. There's only been a handful of games played on this beautiful new floor here at Dow High, and we're going to have to do that jump one more time. That's a... Uh, yeah, that, that was a jump ball violation. Uh, Anna should have tipped it again. Somebody has to touch it uh, outside the circle wherever. Oh, I guess I can see a circle. But there, it's, there's uh, a circle there. It's hard to see. A great gem floor, and we're going to have a uh, whistle because the clock did not start. And uh, so we're attempting to get underway. The, the floor is brand new. The clock, maybe not. Yeah. Well, maybe the players are just playing really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and no time had elapsed. No, they, they've got to get that straightened up. So did not take long to have the uh, the first little technical difficulties of the uh, of the night get underway. Now, Dow High Principal Ted Davis is running the clock tonight, so he he can't pass the buck on to anybody because he's the one that's uh, on the board. Okay, did I see an hourglass down there? <laughs> no, okay. Now the clock is running, so here we, we go. go. We're going to play some basketball. Chargers with the ball to begin the game, going left to right in the white uniforms, Midland in the blue and gold on defense. Chargers trying to work it in on the baseline. Jada Gardner, good-looking move, but she traveled. Now we're going to see a little bit of a press that... Uh... And it worked. Yep. Right into a two char charger defenders, and then as Gardner tries to go up with a shot, she ends up being fouled. Kind of a very uh, auspicious start for both teams here in, uh, in tonight's game, but Gardner will be on the free throw line for the Dow High Chargers. Well, one thing that these uh, uh, Midland High players have got to understand is that you, you pass through a zone press. You don't dribble through it. Jada Gardner is a junior. She is the daughter of Lewis Garner, longtime coach around the Midland area, now an assistant coach for the Dow High Chargers. And Garner hits the second free throw for the first basket of the game from the free throw line. Give credit to the Dow High Chargers. Again, Chargers showing that press. The Midland High gimmicks this time able to beat it down the court. They're going to work inside to Anna Tuck. Tuck shot is so good. Chargers with the rebound. Coming back the other direction, Kenny Caldwell. We'll pull things up, look in the corner. Abby Ray thought about the three, decides against it. Now to Garner. Garner's going to drive in again. Doesn't get the foul call, but the Chargers do get the rebound. Caitlin Murray with the ball for the Chargers. Rebounding may be the big decider during the contest tonight. The team with the most rebounds may be the team that could come away with the W. And 
and and you've got a number of girls on Dallas side of the of the ball that uh, can rebound well. Abby Ray and uh, Ke Kepner, uh, who's on the bench currently. For Midland High, you're looking at Anna Tuck, kind yep. of controlling the uh, the paint. Gardner's that team leader. She's got the ball in the corner, working baseline. Now we'll work it back out over to Murray. Murray puts the three-point shot up and counted. Caitlin Murray, the junior, with the three in the charger for a four to nothing lead. About 90 seconds into the contest, out of bounds, it will be Midland High basketball. All right, well, they're starting to break pressure a little bit better on that press. I think that kind of surprised Midland, how Dow jumped out with, with that zone press. Sometimes you fight fire with fire, and that may be the philosophy that the Dow High Chargers are attempting tonight. Sydney Schaefer. Goes in, she stood up by the Chargers. Nice defense by Murray. And Dow High will come back the other direction with Gardner working the basketball. That was a good no call. Gardner will work it over to Chloe McVeigh. She's a junior, now back to Gardner at the top of the circle. Two minutes into the contest. Chargers have controlled both offense and defense, albeit very early in the game. Gardner, three-pointer, top of the key, shot is no good. Rebound will be pulled down by Anna Tuck. She's the tallest player on the floor at about six foot two. Jump shot taken by Schaefer, no good. Chargers with the uncontested rebound. Gardner working down, bounce pass just to get it back. Nice play by the Chargers, and Gardner has got three of Dow High's six points. Chargers leading six to nothing. Midland High looking to get on the board. They will go to the free throw line as Alyssa Critz looking to get something going. Dow High, they're prepared. They came to play some basketball tonight. Dow High has a presence uh, among them that they, they seem very confident right now. And Midland is just trying to find a, a way of, of getting to the open player. And Dow's passing the ball real well on, on offense. Kimmich will bring Emma Reckaway into the game of that sixth player off the bench if Fritz hit the first free throw. Second free throw is good as well. Reckaway is really one of those players, comes off the bench in that sixth position. She's very comfortable and she's very good. Very talented girl. Chargers working the basketball inside to Gardner. Now back up to McVeigh. McVeigh will go into the paint. Count the basket, McVeigh with her first basket of the game, eight to two in favor of the Chargers, just under five minutes to go. Midland now, Jordan Phillips will work over to Reckaway on the baseline, back to Phillips. Phillips with a couple of dribbles. Alyssa Critch will go into the paint, now feeds it back to Reckaway. Couple of quick passes by Midland High, and the layup shot by Olivia Carpenter does not go. Chargers getting all the rebounds in the first few minutes of the game. Garner thought about the three, decides against it. Now we'll find Abby Ray in the corner and the two point shot. Chargers are on fire, 10 to two. Dow High leading, 4.15 on the clock here in the first quarter. This if you're Jaden Klobis, how long do you wait before you call a timeout? Exactly what and I was thinking. And there's another steal. Not the start the Midland was expecting. Abby Ray to Garner. Garner working the baseline. Feeds it back out. Gardner goes on the baseline, loses the ball out of bounds. It will be Charger basketball. Yeah, I think Midland needs to uh, regroup right now. And I, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, Jaden's uh, trying to get them to do this as a team, but uh, this lead is uh, surprising. Both teams coming off victory. Dow High defeated Bay City Central in their last game. Midland was victorious over Saginaw. And that inbound pass, defense by Anna Tuck will give the basket to, and they're gonna call it travel. Take away the basket, travel and called against Tuck after coming away with the steal. Instead of the three point play, it will be a turnover. I saw her take a step back. I just didn't see that as a travel, but okay. Alexa Colnitis is into the game. She's a sophomore. She missed the first half of the season due to an injury for the Chargers. And her being back on the floor with that sixth person off the bench is something that Kyle Tyson relishes in as Colnitis brings a lot to the table. 
She played a lot as a freshman last year. Shot taken by Murray Counter. Caitlin Murray, the junior with the three-pointer. It is 13 to two in favor of the Charger. 3.20 to go and another turnover as Chloe McVay comes away with the steal. Feeding into the corner, Cole Nidus will feed it back out to the top to McVay. Now over to Gardner. Bounce pass inside to Abby Ray and Ray will go to the free throw line. Dow looks sharp tonight. They really do. Midland may be a little shell-shocked at this point. Again, it's very early in the contest, but no doubt the Chargers have been impressive if Abby Ray goes to the free throw line. She is just a sophomore for the Dow High Chargers. Yeah, Dow's press has been really effective. Not only, just sort of, really effective. Only one senior on the Dow High team. Everybody else, an underclassman. Rebound. Ball's on the ground. We're going to have a held ball. Possession arrow will go to Midland. Chargers will bring Alyssa Kepner. Speaking of the senior, the only senior on the team for the Chargers, Kepner will check into the game. And the tallest player on Dow's team, I believe, at 5'11". Chargers with a little bit of a press. Midland known for the press, haven't had a chance to show it, but Dow's press has been impressive. The steal, but the shot does not go for Murray. Loose ball, and we're going to have a reach-in foul called against Caitlin Murray, who played some great defense here in the first quarter. Well, one thing Dow can do right now is they can take some chances. they got a big lead. And uh, what do they have to lose? I mean, any ki kind of advantage just increases the lead, and that's really what they want to do, keep Midland on their heels. It has worked for the first four minutes of the contest. Midland does get across the timeline this time around. Carpenter looking to bring it in, and she does. Pretty much a coast-to-coast -coast for Olivia Carpenter. 13-4 to now with 2.35 to go in the first quarter. Well, it's only nine points, but uh, the way things were kind of playing out, uh, this game wasn't uh, real even. Chargers taking a rift, trying to go inside. Now they work back out to the outside. Couple of passes as Murray will go inside and trying to beat through a full night if ball is on the loose again. And now the Dow High Chargers will feed it back over. Three-point shot taken by Cole Knightis. Shot is still good, and the rebound pulled down by Jordan Phillips for Midland High. And a Tuck will go to the free throw okay. line if Tuck tried to drive in. That may be what the Kimmicks need to do, maybe get a little more physical in their play and try to draw some more fouls. Well, uh, she, she got a little more room in midcourt, and Dow had to backpedal, and she was able to make the drive uh, and draw the foul. Tuck is a junior. Did not play last year due to injury, but she definitely brings a lot of, uh, you know, poise and talent, I believe. There is no permission for you to use artificial noise. So there's uh, the official giving a warning as some of the uh, Charger student section had some uh, noisemakers, cowbells, and that is not allowed in. MHSAA events. I mean, uh, they did end up uh, icing maybe, Anna a little bit. Maybe football games, but not basketball games. I have no idea. Well, we're not going to have noisemakers tonight. 13 to 5 in favor of the Dow High Chargers. On the baseline, bounce pass goes inside to uh, Cole Knight. If can't get the shot to go, own rebound. Now Jenna Gardner in the paint. She may be small, but she'll be able to pulled down that board and in traffic Gardner able to recover that basketball Cole Nidus feeds inside to Kepner Kepner tried to go back to Cole Nidus and it ends up in the hands of Emma Reckerway well Midland's defense has really tightened up here open lane for the Midland High Chemics but Carpenter unable to get the shot to go I think Midland may have discovered that that lane may be open with the Chargers bringing up the defense a little bit. Well, once you break pressure in the backcourt, there, there is some space there. Three-point shot, left-hand side, no good. Rebound pulled down by the Kimmicks. 
working the other direction. It was Alyssa Critz. Critz has got the ball, three-pointer. Can't get the shot to go. She was left open. It was a decent shot. But Critz was unable to get that shot to fall through. And Dow High is going to make a sub if Kidney Caldwell will come back into the game. 41 seconds to play here in the first quarter, 13 to five in favor of the Dow High Chargers who jumped out to a big lead. Their lead was 11 at one point. Gardner near the baseline. will work it back out and a wide open for a second was Kepner and the ball ended up going out of bounds. I think she just took the eye off the prize for a quick second. <laughs> Yeah, it might have been deflected and, and then hit her hand and went out of bounds. 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Well, same thing happened down on the other end. This yeah. time it goes through Reckaway's hand. Chargers, 10 seconds to work with. Gardner across to Cole Nidus, who's open for the three-pointer count it. From the baseline, that's nice the third three-pointer of the first quarter for the Dow High Chargers. Midland trying to get a shot in before the end of the quarter. Cannot do it, and the Dow High Chargers with a 16-5 lead over the Midland High Chemex. Not the start that a lot of people expected here tonight. Midland High coming in, ranked eighth in the state, but the Dow High Chargers came to play some basketball, and Kyle Tyson has got the Chargers with the lead. You know, in retrospect, it's very easy to play Monday morning quarterback. But I think Midland High could have really benefited from a timeout somewhere in the middle of that quarter. They kind of righted the ship a little bit, but uh, right now they're, they're, they're not shifting fast enough on, on their, their zone defense. Um, so they got colonitis a pretty easy shot there. But Midland's creeping back in, but I wouldn't say that they're on equal terms yet. 16 to five is where we stand as we take a look at this new gym floor here at Dow High and Kyle Tyson loves it. Obviously the old floor had a, a few dead spots in it and yeah, it, the thing that you know Tyson did not like about the floor was that it was, it, you couldn't grip. The grip was gone after 15 years of, uh, of basketball, volleyball and other sports, there was no grip left in the hardwood. Now there's a lot of grip, brand new floor. They call it Herb's House in honor of H.H. Uh, you know, Dow. And so far, you know, again, only a handful of games played on it, but this is the kind of floor that you want your athletes playing on. Well, usually the grip is the sealer that's on top of the wood, but I, I guess they, they replaced all the wood too. Dow High will have the basketball to start. First quarter stats compliments of Jeff Yoder providing stats here tonight. The Midland High gimmicks, nobody with more than two points. They've only got nine points on the game and we've got a foul called away from the ball. Not sure, maybe Critz, yeah it was. Alyssa Critz called for that foul. Only four rebounds for Midland High, Dow High eight rebounds. So the Chargers have doubled up in their that all important rebound category. <laughs> eight to four. Oh. And how about well, this? Six turnovers for Midland High. Yeah, yeah. Most of them were passes through the zone. And Chargers three of four from the three-point line. Everything going Dow High's way in the first eight minutes of the contest. We'll see if that continues for the Chargers or if the Kimmicks will switch things around. Gardner forcing up a shot, and they're going to have a rebounding foul oh, called that. against... Uh, I believe that's Alyssa Kepner. That yeah, got it was. It was over the back. So we stay at 16 to 5 as the second quarter gets underway on a weekend of high school athletics here on MPS TV. Hockey and both boys and girls basketball being broadcast all weekend long. Chargers will, or Kimmick will work it inside Anna Tuck, but. A miscue there will send the Chargers back the other direction. Wide open underneath, she traveled. Yeah. Just could not get that uh, foot to slow down. It was a good looking play, but could not come <laughs> to a stop. Yeah. Like a semi on the expressway, you, you can't stop on a dime. No, you don't. But uh, Or a Harper well, at a buffet table. You just can't stop at one trip. <laughs> a Harper at the buffet table. 
Yeah. Trying to scre have a screeching halt. You know, Not going to happen. Before the dessert, right? Three-point shot, no good. And a tuck <laughs> shot fails wide. And now the Dow High Charger, Kepler, Colnitis, thought about the shot. Now back to the top of the key. After the Chargers work it around, Jada Gardner will go inside. They've got Cole Nidus wide open on the baseline. Beautiful move, but she can't get the shot to go. And a held ball will be called. Anna Tuck and Cole Nidus. Cole Nidus isn't happy about being slammed down by Anna Tuck. I didn't see anything wrong with that. I, I mean, I, aggressive I think, and physical, but I didn't see anything wrong with no, that. No, Anna had a control of the ball. It is Saginaw Valley basketball. There we go. Much, much better attack on the press. Carpenter drives in through two chargers. Olivia Carpenter able to get the line, and now we're going to have a foul call or maybe a whistle stop. Carpenter was nailed after the, uh, after the basket, maybe a little retaliation by, Ke by Kennedy Caldwell. As uh, tempers beginning to flare, the play getting a little more physical. So referee yeah. Brandon Crawford trying to put okay. a stop to that. No foul call, just a little warning. Three-point shot, no good. Rebound, can't stay in bounds, so the Chemex will have the basketball. Boy, Midland's just got to have a little more comfortable hands to get these rebounds. Uh, everything's kind of just banking off their fingertips. Small but vocal student section over there for the Midland High Chemists. Midland High will work the ball to Alyssa Critch. Goes inside the paint. No basket, no foul. The Dow High Chargers coming back the other way. Abby Ray, three-pointer, count it. Nice shot. The sophomore was left open, and now Jaden Clovis will call. A timeout for the Midland High Chemex as the Chargers have a 19-7 lead with just under six minutes to go in the second quarter. And Clovis will use that timeout trying to find out what he has to do defensively to stop the Chargers because the three-point shots are raining in for Dow. Yeah, when, when Dow is attacking uh, th their basket, Midland's got to account for every single player and they've got to try to match up size-wise as well as they can. And uh, Tuck's got to play in the center, and if, if Ray gets a chance to set her feet, she's shown she can knock down some threes. And they, they've got to respect that. And right now, they're letting her take that shot. Four for six from the three-point line for the Dow High Chargers. Pretty impressive stat through the uh, you know first nine minutes of this game well and a lot of that is that they're relaxed they got a big lead you know you can set your feet uh midland is still kind of reeling they're still trying to find their their pace their uh just things that will work for them and chemix will keep the possession midland high coming into this game undefeated at a perfect 12 and 0 best start in the school history, but the Dow High Chargers at 10 and 2, a very impressive start as well. So both of these teams definitely have the ability to make some uh, make a run. The district is going to be very interesting coming the uh, last week of February. Yes, the um, Dow High tonight they've got kind of a flash type of defense that all of a sudden they just run straight at the ball handler, and they're not handling Midland High is not handling it real well. Sidney Schaefer's got the basketball now for the Chemex, trying to get by Cole Nidus. Can't do it. Cole Nidus coming away with a steal, and the forward pass to a wide open Dow High Charger, and the that basket was, goes in. That goes Chloe McVeigh on that layup. The junior, Jordan Phillips, tries to answer with a quick three. Can't do it, and Gardner will pull down the rebound. Two touchdown lead for the Chargers. Add a safety to that. Jenna. <laughs> Jada Gardner with the layup, 23-7. to seven. The Dow High Chargers dominating the first half to the surprise of a lot of people. And we've got an offensive foul called against the Kimmick. Well, you got a team that is playing at home, and they're playing loose, and they're playing well. And uh, Midland High, as the, uh, the visitor, just can't seem to find anything 
that's going to work work for them currently. They've just got to kind of relax and just, just play good defense first to get started. Caitlin Murray has checked back into the game for the Dow High Chargers. Murray's got the basketball right now for Dow. Work it back out. Gardner drives into the paint. Count the bucket. Gardner is having herself a great game so far in the contest. Seven points for Gardner so far. And we've got a whistle and a foul that's going to be called against Dow High's Caldwell. So the second foul on Caldwell, she heads to the bench. That will bring Kepner back into the game. Four and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. 25 to seven, the Chargers with the lead. Carpenter with the ball for Midland High. No place to go. Ball's on the ground, give another steal to the Chargers and Kyle Tyson will get a timeout called while McVay had possession of the ball down on the floor. Charger for the great timeout call, and yeah. Yeah, at this point, you know, Dow High's very comfortable. Things are going the way the Chargers want it. Midland High this year not used to playing from behind. In fact, I don't know if they have played from behind. If not, it definitely wasn't the deficit that they have right now. Oh, no, what, no. What did the Kimmicks have to do to kind of refocus here? Well, it all starts on the defensive end, and they, they, they've got to... Uh, First of all, account for all of Dow's players. They're playing kind of a zone back, back there, but they just can't let let the, the Dow players be able to set their feet. And then they've got to be able to collapse on the girls who are driving the lane. On the other side, Kyle Tyson and the Dow High Chargers. Right now, the game plan is exactly the way that you want it. So how do you keep that going? Have your team not look at the scoreboard. You know, draw a line in the sand and say, okay, it's 0-0 right now. Uh, play hard. D don't let them back into the game. Thought about the three on the far side. Did McVay, now she'll feed it in. And a steal coming the Midland High's way. And Sidney Schaefer, right place, right time, comes up with the steal. Long three-pointer for Jordan Phillips. Shot is no good. Gardner able to get the rebound. Seven points for Gardner. McVeigh's got four. Abby Ray has got three. Gardner into the paint. Shot no good. Rebound by Anna Tuck. 3.15 on the clock. Long pass ahead to Phillips. Phillips tries to go baseline. A foul is going to be called against Gardner. Yeah. Midland tries to uh, to go against Dow's pressure down underneath Midland's basket in a different way every time down. I'm really not seeing a pattern yet. Midland High will be in the bonus from here on out if that's the sixth foul on the Chargers. Carpenter with the basketball for Midland, trying to fight her way in. Ends up losing the handle on the dribble, so she throws it away. That's the ninth turnover for the Midland High Kimmicks. And you're not going to win many games when you give the ball up nine times and a half. And you're not going to win many when Dow High is shooting from the three-point line like they are. Abby Ray able to hit another big three-pointer. Are they five for seven? They are, uh, I believe they are. And another turnover. From the baseline. Shot is no good. Midland High comes back. Working the other direction, Schaefer will feed it. Now over to Anna Tuck, long three-pointer, no good. Almost seems like the Kimmicks are settling for the first open shot that they can get. Yeah. Panic may be setting in, and we're only in the second quarter. Yeah, I think I've seen panic uh, for quite a while. It uh, just They just don't seem uh, settled. They're, they're not running much, we're having girls uh, drive through the middle. And we're going to have a travel call on Gardner. A lot of substitutions coming into the game. Jay Dawson, Emma Reckaway, and Maddie Lang will all check in for the Midland High Kimmicks. Jaden Klobis does not substitute very often, and three coming in, trying to switch things up. Maybe that second line can do what the first line has been unable to do tonight. Well, they're wearing down a bit, and there's also some frustration too. 
Nice shot by Dolphin, unable to go. She does get the rebound, and then Cole Nidif is going to reach it right in. And well, Cole Nidif, maybe a little revenge for uh, earlier when she was tossed to the hardwood. But a different player. A different player, <laughs> but... Same team. Still. Yeah. You know. One forty to go here in the second quarter. Dow High leading 28 to 7. Working on the baseline is Cole Nidif. She'll feed it to the top of the key and then she'll get it back for a three point shot. No good. She follows the shot on the ground. Great hustle by Abby Ray to get the rebound, but then she throws it away into the hands of Midland. And Jordan Phillips all by herself, but can't get the layup to fall through. Rebound from Midland. Anna Tuck will go into the corner. Tuck feeds it back to Phillips. Phillips, couple of dribbles. Now wreck away. Long three point shot. No good. Nothing is falling for the Midland High Chemics tonight. Chargers on the other end. Oh, big block. They're going to call foul. They're going to get that Phillips was pretty with the foul. Is Phillips. she all right? That does appear. A little slow getting to her feet if Chloe McVeigh, the junior, hit hard if the physical play of this game is intensifying a little bit. Well, Phillips had all ball, but then drop, dropped her hand and then got Chloe and pushed her to the ground. So initially it was a block, but then eventually it was pretty physical. So McVeigh on the free throw line, unable to get the first shot to go. McVeigh is a player that saw very limited playing time a yeah. year ago, but this year she's one of those surprises that coaches love. Well, she had to play behind both uh, Molly Davis and Maisie Taylor. And uh, Dow was playing at such high levels, it's hard to, to get much playing time ahead of them. So, Speaking of Molly Davis, what a freshman season she is having at CMU. She, she has been light out and a three-quarter shot against Buffalo that made all kinds of uh, headlines. It, it's been impressive to watch her at the next level. Travel call will take away that attempt for the Midland High Chemics. When you look at the history of girls basketball, both Midland High and Dow High, and you look at the number of players from both teams that have moved on to play some sort of college ball, it's very impressive. And it hasn't always been that way. It just seems like it's really accelerated since about uh, 2005, 2006. A hothead of girls basketball in the state of Michigan right here in the city of Midland. 15 seconds to go in the second quarter. Dow High, Cole Nidus puts up the three and count it. The three-pointers continue to rein in for the Dow High Chargers, an unbelievable first half for the green and gold here tonight. Wreckaway puts the shot up, no good. And we go into halftime and I think it will be safe to say, Tom, that I know very few people that expected the score to be 32-7 to at halftime. Yeah, and uh, they just have to have, Midland High's got to go in and tr try to regroup a bit. I know that Midland probably thinks they were playing against about seven or eight defenders at times, but Dow High was very confident and very mobile. Now the Chargers decided to fight fire with fire with the press from the early part of the game. It worked to perfection, forcing a lot of turnovers in the first half. Combine that with the poor shooting of Midland and the hot three-point shooting of Dow High, and that is why the score is what it is. And guess what? When you can't put the ball in the basket, you can't set your press. So Midland High has not been able to use their bread and butter defense much at all, and that's a credit to Dow High. But we are at halftime here at Dow High with the HH Dow High Chargers with the lead. Coach have to make halftime adjustments, and we'll see what happens in the final 16 minutes of this game. Dow High 32, Midland High 7. You're watching High School Basketball on MPS TV.
brand new floor put in over the holiday break and the, uh, the brand new floor have been ultra lucky if you happen to be the Dow High Chargers because uh, they they have been shooting lights out here in the first half. In fact, they have not lost uh, since the game uh, against the Bidlet High Chemics. And Tom, this has been a very impressive first half if you happen to be a fan of the Dow High Chargers because they were shooting lights out in the first half. Well, this gym has all the comforts of home, and that's where Dow is right now. And they're comfortable. You can see that they had a plan to try to run at the Midland guards when they broke pressure coming across the half court line. And Midland just has not been able to, to handle that kind of pressure. Plus the fact Dow has been able to run a press and Midland hasn't even had a chance to do that because they've only had seven points. This mo looks more like a football blowout. Yeah. 32 to seven. I don't, nobody had this score predicted. Regardless of what team had the 32, we all were anticipating a very close game between these two teams, but that is not what we have ended up with so far. The uh, Dow High Chargers, six of nine from three-point range. Gonitif, Murray, and Ray all have uh, two three-pointers. Uh, Murray has got six points. Carter's got seven points. And how about the fact that the leading score happens to be Abby Ray, who's got eight points in the first half. Dow High out-rebounding Midland 17-7 in the first half of play, and the Kimmicks committing 11 turnovers. Now here in quarter number three, obviously, if you're the Midland High Kimmicks, you need to come out with a different game plan because you've got a lot of distance to try to make up. You, you do, and Dow has to remember, this game is not over, and I've seen teams go flat. Driving in was Sidney Schaefer, did not get the foul, did not get the basket, and the Dow High Chargers will come the other direction as McVeigh works in. She's knocked down, no foul call, so the Chemics will come away with a steal. Carpenter looking to take it the distance, unable to get the shot to go. So the shooting struggles continue for the Midland High Chemics. Okay, the Chemics are going to try their press even when they don't uh, have a made basket at the end. Now uh, Chemics trying to run a little bit faster, maybe a run and gun offense here in the third quarter. Carpenter puts up the three-pointer, count it. Olivia Carpenter, seven points on the game. Carpenter's got seven of Midland High's ten as we played a minute of the third quarter. It's been a while that uh, Midland High has anything to cheer about. Over and back the call. Gardner didn't get her foot down in time. The ball happened to be on the uh, Dow High side of the yeah. line, but in basketball, your foot has to be down before the ball is caught. That did not happen. That's why it was over and back. Yeah. Jordan Phillips for the Chemics with the basketball. Phillips taking a couple of dribbles to Anna Tuck. Tuck works the baseline, nice pass to Schaefer, but Schaefer finds two Chargers in her face, and the Kimmicks will have to work it out. Tuck being triple teamed, and the Chargers will come away with the steal. McVeigh thought about the shot. Over on the other side, Caitlin Murray thought about the three, and we've got a whistle because there are some, there's a little bit of debris on the floor left over from the halftime show. 6.26 to go, third quarter of action, 32 to 10 in favor of the Chargers. Dow High looking to keep their winning streak intact and put an end to the undefeated streak of Midland High. Shot from the free throw line, no good. Phillips will get the rebound. Kemick for the two on one advantage. Alyssa Kretz having a hard time holding on to the ball. Now Anna Tuck will have it for the Kemick. Back to Kretz. Kretz trying to feed it to Carpenter. Great defense by Murray. Comes up with a steal. Ahead to Abby Ray. And the layup in for the Dow High Chargers. Great defense continuing here in the third quarter for Dow. Phillips working back to Alyssa Kretz for Midland. Now Jordan Phillips wide open for the three. Count it. Second three-pointer of the half for the Midland High Kimmick. Well, the Midland High is setting up their offense a little better. It's starting to look like an offense before they were kind of shell-shocked. On the baseline, Chargers lose the ball, goes out of bounds. They're going to say that it's Kimmick basketball, though uh, Abby Ray says, wait a second, that, uh, that came off of Kimmick, but 
Referee Keith Richardson disagrees. Well, it looked like it had been tipped by Anna Tuck, but I think Ray uh, guided the ball down to the floor. Shot taken, no good. Rebound, we're gonna have a foul called. And a couple of players getting tangled up. The second quarter was very physical for both of these teams. The third quarter, yeah. maybe, you know, and when you get a game that doesn't go the, the way the script is supposed to go, <laughs> yeah. you get frustrated, and a lot of times you get a little more physical. And and that, that was the physicalness was through frustration, I think. And a tuck on the free throw line will get the first free throw to go. Well, it's 7-2 to two in the second half, Midland High. But it's 34-14. to 14. Overall, now 34-15 now. Yeah. Just over five minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, here Midland gets to put their press on. Dow's handling it pretty well, though. Abby Ray, three-pointer. That time it does not go, and the ball bounced up, hitting one of the beams, so Midland High will have the basketball. They ever played Plinko? It's kind of that game at the end of a miniature golf game where the thing bounces around for a free game. That's what that looked like. The ball was hitting everything but went going through the basket. Isn't that a game on the prices, right? Uh, it might be, too. Drop the chip Plinko? down and try to... Oh, that's right. Try to okay. come away with the money. Yep. Midland High to inbound underneath their own basket. Dow High with a big lead on their home floor. Our first broadcast from uh, the new Herb's House Gymnasium. Sydney Schaefer unable to get the shot to go, and Midland High's Jordan Phillips will be called for a foul. That's the third foul on Phillips, so she becomes the first player to be in foul trouble, and they're going to bring in Emma Reckaway. Reckaway, the daughter of Northwood coach Jeff Reckaway, Breckaway brings a lot of intensity. She's a very smart player on the floor. And I'm sure she's seen a lot of basketball over the years. And she has embraced that, you know, first person off the bench role that she is playing for Midland High this year. Bounce pass tried to go inside. Stolen away by Midland High. Breckaway comes away with the steal. And a tuck. Back to Rockaway. Rockaway into the paint. Can't get the basket to go. She was more open than she thought she was going to be. I think that surprised her. She was expecting some contact. Everything but the basket. Gardner has been the team leader on the floor for the Dow High Chargers. Not the leading scorer so far. And Gardner won't get the foul called, but does get her own rebound. The strong rebounding of the Chargers continuing. And Three-point shot off the mark there for McVay, and Midland High will come back the other direction. Carpenter thought about the three, half an open lane. Good read by Carpenter, can't get the shot to go, and an offensive rebounding foul will be called against Alyssa Kretz, who does not like that call. And that's going to be three on Kretz, so now two Kimmich oh, players finding themselves in foul trouble. Meanwhile, Alexa Colnitis has checked back into the game for the Dow High Chargers. Colnitis has been very impressive. She was very eager to get back on the floor. She dealt with an injury during the first half of the season. She has added an extra spark to this Dow High team. Colnitis takes the ball for the Chargers. Pass and a foul is going to be called on Kred. She was going for the steal. Instead, she Ouch. made a lot of contact with Kepner, and that is going to be the fourth foul on Kred. She's going to head to the bench, bringing Jay Dawson into the game. Well, you kind of want to make things happen, but uh, in this, this regard, uh, uh, the foul trouble for Midland High has been uh, a, really a problem now that's starting to really take take shape. And we're going to have a foul called on Carpenter. That's already the fourth foul 
in the third quarter for the Midland High Chemists. Might be a situation, Tom, where it rains, it pours, because there is just nothing from missed shots to, uh, you know, not being able to rebound to committing way too many fouls. This is yeah. just nothing is going the way Midland High expected it to go. Meanwhile, the Dow High Chargers have got things going their way. Olivia Carpenter coming up with a steal and a hard foul underneath. Carpenter hitting hard. Now we mentioned how physical the play has become during the course of this game and Carpenter was absolutely drilled. Chloe McVeigh who also hit hard and was also uh, a recipient of a hard foul back in the first half. May have thought a little bit of revenge and this is something the officials are gonna wanna keep an eye on because we have seen a, a lot of hard fouls on both sides of the floor. Yeah, and Dow's played a really good game overall. I mean, they're starting to become a little more human on their three-point shots, but they played a really good game, and you don't want to see that uh, smudged by, you know, a, an ugly kind of event that this game could evolve into. Carpenter hitting both of her free throws. 34-17 in favor of the Chargers, 2.45 to go here in the third quarter. Cole, uh, shot taken, Cole Nidus, the sophomore, continuing to be impressive. Mid Midland is taking their time. All right, that's better pace going through their, their zone. And another turnover. Dow High's got a man advantage as Midland High slow getting to her feet with Dawson after being knocked to the ground. Gardner working the ball. Jada Gardner, the junior. She's been on the varsity team since her freshman year. And she's gotten taller and she's gotten stronger. Dow works it inside to Caldwell, but stolen away. Anna Tuck will come away with the steal for the Midland High Chemics. And we've got a foul called. It will go think, against the Chargers. I think it's on Caldwell. I think she just kept uh, jabbing her hand in, trying to tip the ball away. That will be the third foul on Caldwell. So Caldwell becomes the first Charger to be in foul trouble. Just under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Carpenter goes up with a shot. Can't get the basket to fall. Cold Knight is playing pretty good defense for the Chargers. Dawson now. For Midland, will work it to Rackaway. Rackaway comes in and will draw the foul. Okay. Caitlin Murray had pretty good defense for a while, but a good job by Rackaway of attempting to go to the basket. And most of the time, if you just keep driving towards that basket, eventually you're either going to get the bucket or you're going to get the foul. And in Midland's case, you can start to uh, chip away at the lead with the clock stopped. We're not quite at a point where it, they're going to be using heavy strategy to win the game, but uh, this is a beginning. Sydney Schaefer will check into the game for the Chargers. And Rekaway able to get the free throws to fall through. And it was Reckaway that hit two free throws at the end of the Heritage game that were instrumental at holding the lead and uh, giving the, the win to the Chemex. 90 seconds to go in the third quarter and a 10 second call. The Chargers unable to get across midcourt and Jaden Klob is happy about that. Maybe a little spark for the Midland High defense. Again, we're late in the third quarter, but we have seen some strange things happen. Yeah, and Dow has scored four points and Midland scored 12, but I, I'm just not seeing the game changing momentum hugely. Nice rebound by Tuck, but she can't get the put back to go. And the Dow High Chargers will come away with the board and Alyssa Critch is gonna be called with the foul. Tuck. And or Tuck, excuse yep. me, Anna Tuck with the foul. One oh eight on the clock, 36-19 Chargers. Well, the Chargers had trouble in the third quarter of their game 
uh, at Midland High. It was like they just stopped scoring, but they didn't have the benefit of such a huge lead. And a foul will be called. This one is Caldwell. That will be called for the foul. Fifth team foul against the Chargers in the fourth one on Caldwell. So she will head to the bench for the Chargers. So a couple of players finding themselves in foul trouble. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Nice recovery by Midland High. Rockaway will drive in. Back out over to Jordan Phillips. Three-point shot, count it. She's been quiet most of the night, but Jordan Phillips able to hit a three, and Clovis will call a timeout with 37 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Dow High leading 36 to 22 if we look at, at the Charger huddle. And they've got to really make sure, as I'm talking with Dow High, that you can't think that the game has been put away. You know, just that long shot by Phillips, early in the, in the game, that shot probably would have hit the front rim and donked to the floor. But with a little hop to her step, it hit the front rim and climbed in. But one thing I've noticed with uh, Midland High's offense, they're running the weave and they're much tighter with it. A uh, very vocal uh, Kimmick student section. I'm not sure what they are, uh, what they're being vocal about. But they, uh, they were, they're definitely, uh, definitely being, uh, definitely making, <laughs> making some noise. Well, they're going to have some good, a good time, and uh, you know, Midlands within about 14 points now, with uh, still in the third quarter. The game could go the other way. Who knows? With Midland's ability to hit three-point shots, we may see a real comeback. Uh, Dow's got to play like the game is tied right now. Well, Midland has outscored Dow 15 to four here in the third quarter. They're also nine of 10 from the free throw line. Chargers, meanwhile, their scoring has went a little bit on the cold side. Midland high with 20 seconds to go in the third quarter, and a tuck will work in, and a foul's gonna be called. Did not make a lot of contact. Cole Nidus doesn't think she made any, but she did. And that will send Tuck back to the free throw line. Well, Tuck's arms are so long that uh, I, I'm not sure if the Dow defenders are, are aware that she can plant, you know, put the ball up at, at such a high level. But uh, to, to my point a couple of minutes ago, the, uh, the, the weave that Midland High has, much tighter. Dow's trying to jump it, and they're getting fouls this quarter, and earlier in the game, they were getting steals. Now the Kimmicks are shooting very well from the free throw line, and they have uh, turned things around here in the third quarter. Now it's only a 12-point game. At one time, it was a 21-point lead for the Chargers, and underneath, Dow High will go to the free throw line. Well, the Chargers also have been bit a little bit by the turnover bug. They have committed seven turnovers here in the third quarter. They committed seven total in the first half. Maybe it's the direction they're going. <laughs> that kind of hit uh, Midland High going, uh, going that way too in the first half. Always got to have a uh, superstition of, of some kind. <laughs> Alyssa Kepner is on the free throw line. She adds a lot of defense to this Charger team, but she can also hit the free throw. Back-to-back -back free throw, but now Midland looking to score at the end of the third quarter, but cannot do it. And we end up coming to the end of three, 38 to 24 in favor of the Dow High Chargers. You're watching high school basketball on MPS TV, a great crew of uh, volunteers from MCTV bringing you the action here tonight. If you would like to become an MCTV volunteer, you can work on shows just like this one. You can become a producer, create a studio program, use a professional video camera, all kinds of things 
that you can do, including if you don't want to be on camera, you can do an audio podcast. All kinds of options just by being an MCTV volunteer. The first Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday of most months, the cost is just $45. That includes the first year user access fee. For more information, call 837-3474. You can also head online to the City of Midland website and find the link to MCTV. We're also on Facebook. And I don't know if we're on Twitter or not or Instagram or do we have a TikTok account, Matt? You know, we, we don't have no, no TikTok. <laughs> we, I, I want to see the TikTok videos of uh, Matt and Matt down at the MCTV office is what I'm, uh, I'm looking for. Now, Jason, you've given me a lot of static of not being uh, on the media thing. I am now on Facebook. You are. You are. I don't know what I'm doing, but and, I'm on Facebook. And you don't have a picture on your profile yet, but you are on Facebook. One, You're one, right. I one, don't have one. One step at a time. I, I, I like the, the Pinocchio one on the commercials. Huh? <laughs> Fourth quarter underway. Dow High with the ball. This game is not done yet, 38-24. to 24. Midland High controlled the third quarter, but the Dow High Chargers had such a huge lead at the at halftime that they are riding that lead here in the second half. And a nice pass inside Abby Ray. Reckaway will commit the foul. Good looking pass, and Ray will go to the free throw line. Well, D Dow handled the ball pretty well. They kind of slowed things down. It's kind of a little different look. Uh, Midland's going to need to make some adjustments as uh, the game progresses. Abby Ray does hit the first free throw. Mm. She's been impressive tonight. I have a suggestion for Midland. Don't foul her. May She's got a really, really good shot. Well, every team has that player that kind of sneaks under the radar, and I think Abby Ray may be that player for the Chargers. Yeah. And just a sophomore, I believe. Driving in with Jordan Phillips, and she will end up going to the free throw line. Now in the fourth quarter, despite the lead that the Dow High Chargers have, Dow wants that clock moving, where Midland will be very content. They've been shooting very well from the free throw line. Midland will be very content continuing to shoot, although they're going to call that foul wall. But if, it was on the floor, but it's a one-in-one -one situation, so Midland will go to the free throw line. In fact, both teams are in the bonus. Yeah. Phillips is a senior and a leader when it comes to Midland High. And a game like this, Tom, when you're, you're down, in this case, you're down by 11 points, do you need your seniors to step up? Do you need your team leaders to say, we can do something here? Yeah, and sometimes that can be done in a timeout. Or uh, maybe as Dow is setting up to shoot a free throw, just uh, looking to your seniors uh, to get some stability. It's more than an 11-point deficit. The uh, portion of the clock was blocked on my end, so I, I had the score wrong. Well, I wasn't sure about your subtraction skills. <laughs> but <laughs> You know, math was not my favorite subject, but it was not that bad. But what I thought it was 29. It was actually a, a 525, not 29. So... Now Midland no. not happy. The Dow High Chargers will get the timeout. Jaden Klobis thought that the ball was in midair. Did not think. Oh, he is not happy at all. But the referee giving the Chargers the timeout said that the Chargers still had possession when Kyle Tyson requested the timeout. And, well, Klobis may not like it, but the, the referee pretty confident in his call. So Dow High does get the timeout, stopping the clock with 6.44 to go here in the fourth quarter. And confidence with a referee is a good attribute. You know, they have to keep control of the game, whether they're right or wrong. They have to show that they're, uh, they're confident with what they called. Well, this is a uh, pretty good officiating crew on hand tonight. Keith Richardson, Brandon Crawford, and Tori Crawford. A lot of postseason experience on the floor for those three individuals. Well, the crowd has grown a little bit. I was kind of surprised when we went on the air that uh, there are more empty seats than I expected. But during the course of the night, 
We've got a pretty good crowd that have filed in, as well as those standing around the perimeter of the gym. Yeah, they've opened up the balcony, or at least filled it in. I just didn't see anybody up there earlier. Chargers with the ball after the timeout, trying to break double teaming, and a foul is going to be called. Nice job by Murray to kind of force the foul. Phillips will be the guilty one for the Chemex. That is third on Phillips. And the Chemex with three players in foul trouble. Actually, that's the fourth one on Phillips. So now they only have the, the, three. Board, the board is indicating three, but I'm trusting our stat man that it is four. So now two players from Midland High playing with four fouls with six and a half minutes to go. Rockaway will feed it now to Phillips. Working it back out over to Rockaway. Rockaway drives in. Nice pass to Schaefer who's wide open in the paint. Sidney Schaefer able to uh, get the bucket for Midland. 12 point game now. Chargers on the baseline. Each team has three timeouts should they need them. And if this game gets much closer, we may see all those timeouts used in the last six minutes of the game. Gardner drives into the paint for a down. Nice move by Gardner. She gets the bucket and the foul. Yeah, she took that one more dribble and cleared some space. That, that was a really good drive for her. And it was on the left-hand side. Really nice controlled uh, shot on the glass. Rekaway called with the foul. That is the third one on Rekaway as Gardner will be back on the free throw line. A player that has, so you mentioned it earlier, Tom, she has improved, Gardner has, and she completes the three-point play from freshman to sophomore. I mean, now junior, Gardner just keeps getting better every year. Yeah, and she's a smart player. And she's got a, a dad who's a coach and, and probably uh, supports her. Tuck will Is, draw the okay? foul. All right. Uh, Anna Tuck will go back to the free throw line. She's been strong from the stripe so far tonight. And Jeff, what's Midland High from the free throw line? They're, they're pretty good, aren't they? They've only missed one. And that holds true. Tuck hit the first one. And a friendly bounce on the <laughs> visitor's court the second time around. 13 point game with five and a half minutes to go. Midland is 17 of 18 from the free throw line. That is something, there's a, a few things that Jaden Klobis, well, more than a few things that I don't think Klobis is happy about tonight, but the free throw shooting for Midland High is something that he's gotta be very satisfied with. Yeah, they just didn't get to the line very much in the first half. Uh, most of those, those attempts have been in the second half. And like I said earlier, uh, you really want to score with their clock stopped. Rekaway has picked up her fourth foul, so there are three different Kemet players that are in pretty big foul trouble with 5.20 to go. Meanwhile, Caitlin Murray, the junior, hits one of two on the free throw line. 14-point game. Carpenter looking to go coast to coast. Can't get the shot to go and a big rebound underneath. Nice job by Alyssa Kepner. But Rekaway will have the steal. Maybe an ill-advised pass for the Chargers. Anna Tuck now with the ball for Midland. Kemix playing with a little more urgency with five minutes to go in the contest. Rekaway on the left-hand side. Now we'll work it back out over to Tuck. Tuck dribbles into the paint. Now to Schaefer. Schaefer puts up the shot. Won't fall through, rebound, Gardner will come away with it. A good offensive trip down for Midland, but they couldn't come away with any points. Meanwhile, Dow High's Murray puts up a shot. It doesn't go, but Gardner is able to get the rebound and the put back in for Dow. And it's now a 16 point lead with four and a half minutes to go in the contest. 
And that, I think, was an important basket. I think that it showed Dow is still able to put the ball in the basket. Three-point shot is no good, and Kepner with the rebound. Ahead to Cole Nidus. Nice bounce pass, and well, able to come up with it. They're going to say it was off the knee of a Dow High Charger player, but it was a pretty I good pass. I think Murray was back there, and uh, I didn't see any objection. But. Alyssa Kritz is going to check back into the game for Midland. Carpenter with the ball for the Chemex. Midland trying to do something in the final four minutes. They played a very good third quarter, but you still go back if you're just tuning into the game. Just an absolute dominating performance by Dow High in the first half, limiting the Chemex to, what, seven points, I believe, and it was just all chargers in the first half. And Dow High picking things up here in the fourth quarter because Alyssa Kepner found herself wide open, and the Chargers keep increasing that lead. Schaefer's three-pointer is no good. Rebound by Dow, and she was fouled by Kritz, who's going to be fouled out. Well, I would bet you that, uh, that Kyle for Dow would say that they played their best half, and Jaden would say they played their worst half. And there's no doubt that Anna Tuck will go back into the game for Midland High. Alyssa Kritz becoming the first uh, Kimmick player to foul out. There's still a couple of two more Midland players with four fouls. Chargers have one that's in foul trouble. On the free throw line is Alyssa Kepner. Double bonus from here on out for the Chargers. Kepner hitting one of two on the free throw line. Well, the Kimmicks had pulled within 11, I believe. Never did get the deficit down to single digits, but Pulled with an 11, but now it's back to a 19-point Dow High lead. Chargers have been on a streak here in the last two or three minutes of the game, and again, strong defense there. No foul called, so the Chargers will have the basketball. Well, there was contact. I guess they didn't want to penalize either of them. Chargers down court in a hurry, but can't get the three-quarter by Murray to go. Now on the floor, everybody fighting for it, and a held ball is going to be called. The possession arrow will be in favor of the Chargers. Three minutes even to go. High school basketball on MPS TV. Also this weekend, you will catch hockey action and boys basketball. So it's a full weekend of Midland versus Dow. And Carpenter will draw the foul, or will be penalized for the foul that will end up sending McVeigh to the free throw line. Do you know where the districts are being played? Uh, Bay City Western. Bay City Western, okay. McVeigh on the free throw line. She's played a pretty steady game. One of two from the stripe for McVeigh. 20 point lead with three minutes to go. Reckaway, nice bounce pass to Schaefer. Count the bucket for Midland. That was a great setup by Emma Reckaway. And a nice shot by Sidney Schaefer. There's a steal by Anna Tuck. She goes up for a shot. She wanted the foul, but good defense by Murray holding her place. And now I think Tuck may have been called with the foul. So Anna Tuck will go. Well, Anna Tuck picking up her third foul. McVeigh will be back on the free throw. No, that. Uh, uh, this is Col that's Cole Knight is on the Colonitis, free throw line. Yeah. We talked about Cole Nidus coming back in December and or actually January when Cole Nidus came back because her first game back happened to be on the uh, same day as uh, exam. Oh. She told Fred Kelly of the Midland Daily News that 
She wasn't able to concentrate too much on the exam because <laughs> she was excited about getting back on the basketball sure. court. Well, uh, Alexa Colonitis has played a good game. I don't think that Dow was solely uh, winning this game because of her efforts. I think that you had lots of stars for Dow High tonight. Schaefer from inside the paint can't get the shot to go. Rebound by Tuck, but it's stolen away. Kepner have played solid off the bench for the Dow High Chargers. Gardner with the pass to the side to the baseline. Gardner will get the ball back, 2-12 on the clock. Dow High Chargers just waiting for two minutes to go before they can celebrate a victory and ending the Midland High undefeated streak here tonight. And Midland, or Dow is now trying to take the air out of the ball, as they say, just to uh, be very deliberate. Until you get an open shot like that. However, Kepner could not get the basket to go. And now Midland's wreck away, looking to go coast to coast, and she's going to draw the foul. 141 on the clock, and wreck away will go to the free throw line. At this point in time, it may be a, a case of that first half, just, just an amazing start for Dow. I can't get over the fact that in the first half, the Chargers just lights out from three-point line, strong rebounding, yep. just, just an amazing first half, and that, is, that was the difference of the game. Midland just unable to overcome the start. Uh, absolutely, and uh, like we said, uh, probably could have used a couple of timeouts in that first half to try to change a little bit of the momentum, get people in better spots, get them thinking a little straighter, but uh, it didn't happen. And you got to give you know credit to Kyle Tyson for coming up with a great game plan that worked to perfection. You know the the players executed it just the way it was diagrammed, and you know, credit all the way around. If you happen to be the Chargers, and Kyle Tyson's going to call a timeout with 1.22 to go. But if you're if you're the Dow High Chargers, this is what you wanted from a basketball game. You had a little bit of a lull in the third quarter. But yeah. Dow High from the get-go, great game plan, great execution, and this was a very strong performance by the Dow High Chargers. But you know, at the same time, Jaden on the Midland side can look at this and say, okay, we were really, really bad in the first half, but look at what we did in the second half. And we're gonna take those things and stay positive, move forward, and if we meet Dow in the, uh, in the tournaments, uh, it's, we're, we're going to be looking at each other eye to eye. Well, and this is the first year that the districts will be seeded for the MHFAA. So the first, mm -hmm. first and second seeds are placed on opposite sides of the bracket. Everything else is a random draw. So the entire bracket is not seeded. They seed number one, they seed number two. They place those teams on the opposite side. You are not guaranteed a bye if you're one or two. The only guarantee that you are with the new seeding in the MHFAA postseason is you're guaranteed that number one and number two will not meet until the district finals. That That's really good. That's really good. It, it gives some uh, benefit to those people that had great seasons. Great pass by McVeigh, but Kepner could not come away with the shot. Breckaway with the ball for the Midland High Chemex. Ends up being blocked by Ray. What a game Abby Ray have had for the Chargers. Yes, she has. I mean, she, she's not been flashy, but she's hit some shots, uh, some three-point shots. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how many points did, does uh, Ray have tonight? Uh, the leading scorer for the Chargers is Garner. She's got okay. 10 points and eight rebounds. Carpenter has led Midland tonight with nine points. Both teams okay. have had yep. double-digit turnovers. In fact, Dow turned over the ball 19 times, most of those in the second half. Midland had yeah. 16 turnovers, most of those in the first half. So I think turnovers is something that both coaches will look to improve on. Yes. You know, this is uh, a game that uh, you see a lot of pressure. You see uh, a, a lot of things that each coach is trying against the, the opponent to try to get things uh, loosened up, especially middle and high is trying to get better. Final seconds of the game, 15 seconds left on the clock here tonight before the Chargers will officially begin the celebration. And the ball, well, we're going to have a foul call that will stop the clock. 
with eight seconds to go. So if you're the Dow High Chargers, you're going to improve now to a record of 11 and three, or 11 and two. They're gonna be, well this is a non-Valley game I believe. Correct, it is. So we've got, uh, we've got a whistle and uh, I think Gardner's gotta come back out on the floor. Kyle Tyson wanted to put Gardner on the bench for the final second, but you have to wait until the first free throw is done. For the Dow High Chargers improving to 11 and two with the win. Midland High, this will be the first loss of the season for the Chemex. They will fall to 12 and one. But again, there's a lot of basketball to be played in the month of February. Districts at Bay City Western, we could be looking at a Charger Chemex district final come that final week in February as they split during the regular season. But tonight, the Dow High Chargers able to dominate the first half. And once they had that 28 point lead, Midland High just could not overcome despite a strong second half by the Chemex. The start of the game for the Dow High Chargers, extremely impressive here tonight as they rack up the points in a very quick fashion. Dow High defeating Midland High 52 to 33. For our entire MCTV crew, for our statistician Jeff Yoder, and for Tom Bell, my name is Jason Harper. Thank you for watching High School Athletics on MPS TV. The final score, Dow High 51, Midland 33. Good night.